Walking your dog through the peaceful wonders of nature is usually a serene experience, but beneath the tranquility of this routine activity lies predators waiting for an easy meal. From alligators bursting out from the shoreline to bears charging out from the bushes, sometimes walking your dog can lead to deadly encounters. Hit that like button and subscribe right now. In today's episode, we go over three times people have been attacked by wild animals while walking their dog. Welcome to Final Affliction. This story just goes to show that animal attacks can happen to even the most experienced and cautious hikers and campers. The tragedy occurred in September 2023 and shook the residents of the province of Alberta. Doug Inglis, aged 62, and Jenny Gussi, also 62, had been together since university. They lived in Lethbridge, Alberta, Canada. They were inseparable, both working as technicians in the same scientific lab. They had a deep love for the great outdoors and were certainly no stranger to the challenges that it can sometimes present. They each carried with them vital survival kits and emergency equipment every time they ventured into the wilderness. They traveled out to Banff National Park twice a year, usually once in the spring and once in the fall. But the National Park is home to some of the deadliest predators in Canada, grizzly bears. There are thought to be 65 individuals that call Banff home, with a further 20 to 40 black bears too. A family member said that Doug and Jenny were very careful people when they were on their adventures in the wilderness, whether it be hiking, camping, canoeing, or whitewater rafting. They knew bear protocol, and they followed it to a T. But sometimes, with even the best precautions in place, people can find themselves in the wrong place at the wrong time. The pair had with them their sidekick and hiking companion, their dog. The three of them stuck to signposted routes and always adhered to any warnings displayed throughout the park. But on that fateful trip in late September 2023, there were no warnings. No bears had been sighted in that area, and there had been no reports of them from visitors. They were on day five of a week-long visit to the park, something they looked forward to every year. They were making their way along Red Deer River Valley, west of Yahatinda Ranch. This valley is an untouched landscape within the park. It is inaccessible to most hikers, with no roads leading in or out of it. Meadows give way to mature spruce forests, and towering above the valley floor are craggy mountaintops and glacial cirques. The area is home to some fascinating wildlife, including elk, moose, wolves, grizzly bears, and cougars. The landscape is simply stunning, but its remoteness isn't for the faint of heart, and it has its dangers. After the fifth day's hiking, the couple found a spot to camp for the night. They hadn't made it to the planned camping spot, but wanted to set up before it got dark. They knew bears posed a real threat and didn't want to run into one as the sun set. It was a sensible decision. They had time to set up their tent and cook dinner before night fell. As the three of them settled around the campfire, Doug sent a notification message using their Garmin in reach to his uncle. Colin Inglis. The message said they hadn't made the planned campsite, but were setting up camp now. The message pinged through at 5 p.m. It was the reassurance their family needed, and it was yet another safety precaution the cautious couple took whilst hiking in the backcountry. They checked in with family twice every day, but what the couple didn't know was that there was a grizzly bear on the prowl that evening. As the weather begins to get colder, bears enter a hyperphagic state in which they gorge themselves on as much food as possible before the winter. It's essential for them to pack in the calories and pack on the pounds. They need to make it through the long, cold, dark winter months all the way through to springtime. Something alerted the bear to their presence. Perhaps it was their scent, the smell of their dinner, or the clinking of pots and pans as they cleared away their dinner. Whatever happened, their bear came for them. The couple, being experienced campers and bear-wise, had hung up their food in a nearby tree so as not to attract bears into their tent. They also kept with them a can of bear spray each. 
After dinner, Doug and Jenny crawled into their tent with their dog. As night fell and darkness engulfed Banff National Park, the two of them sat up reading on their e-readers, something they did every night before settling down. But outside, a grizzly bear was approaching the tent. They could hear it sniffing just the other side of the canvas. They stayed still and as quiet as possible, hardly daring to breathe. Then terrifyingly, it slashed through the canvas and tried to grab the couple inside. The dog growled and barked, and Doug and Jenny tried to scare it away, yelling at it. Doug reached for his bear spray and emptied the canister at the bear, but in a fury, the bear fought back. Nobody knows exactly what happened during those horrifying moments, but one of them sent an SOS message from the Garmin, which Doug's uncle received. It said, bear attack, bad. So last Monday, they started out. And Monday night, like every other time, I would, at the end of the day, I would get an in-reach message saying, we're at our destination, everything's okay. Um, on Friday night, same thing. Uh, at uh, 4.52, I got a message saying, we're delayed, but everything's okay. And uh, that message would mean that they were in a camp, their camp was set up, they were probably making dinner, and they were messaging myself and Jenny's mom with that message to say that they, things were good. Um, 8.15, the phone rings, I got a phone call from Garmin, uh, who InReach belongs to, and the message was, we've had an SOS message, and the SOS, not only was the SOS activated, which was a, is a button, but there was a message input into the InReach that said, bear attack bad. So at that point, we, we knew something was happening, that was very bad, that they were in trouble. The distress message also immediately alerted a wildlife human attack response team. This emergency GPS device was yet another piece of equipment the well-prepared couple always carried with them. It was potentially a life-saving device. The response team were deployed immediately. The use of a chopper was out of the question due to poor weather and poor visibility. This was a serious blow. The rescue team knew that after a bear attack, every second counts, and now they were forced to make the journey on foot. They were specially trained individuals with mountaineering and medical training, specifically to attend to animal attack victims. Marching through the Canadian wilderness, they didn't know what they were going to find at the location. Nobody knew if the victims were dead or alive. They had to traverse the steep, rocky terrain in the dead of night, their flashlights illuminating the way. They knew they were walking into danger. They knew that a bear was out there, and yet they had to keep going to try and reach the couple in desperate need. At one o'clock in the morning, five hours after they received the distress signal, the rescuers arrived at the couple's camp. The scene they arrived at was distressing. They could see signs of a struggle, and tragically, they could see three dead bodies, those of Doug and Jenny and that of their dog. The grizzly bear had rampaged through the camp, destroying everyone in it. The three of them lay on the ground outside the tent. As they scouted around the campsite, they tried to piece together what had happened. The food was still hung up in the trees, and lying on the ground were two cans of bear spray. They were empty. The tent was flattened and shredded. The two e-readers were inside with their screens smashed. There were signs of a struggle that didn't occur in just one place. There was evidence that the couple tried to scare the bear away, but none of their preparation and none of their scare tactics worked. But the rescue team wasn't alone. They were being watched by the same grizzly. It stood just yards away, hidden by the trees. As they investigated the scene, they suddenly heard a crashing through the undergrowth. Turning their heads and spinning their flashlights around, they saw a grizzly bear emerging from the trees, illuminated by their flashlight beams. It ran into the clearing. It wasn't going to stop. This wasn't a mock charge. They only had one option. Pulling the trigger on a rifle, one of the rescue team shot the bear. It fell to the ground just feet from where they stood. Royal Canadian Mounted Police arrived at the scene at 5 o'clock that morning. 
They carefully carried the victims away and sent the bear off for a necropsy. The investigation into the bear revealed that she was a 25-year-old female. She wasn't lactating at the time and wasn't tagged or known to the park rangers as a nuisance bear. She was in fairly good condition but with poor teeth and less than normal body fat for that time of year. Her behavior had been very aggressive. If a bear has attacked a person due to defense from being startled, then it usually leaves the area afterwards. But this bear remained nearby. Could this bear have been hunting the two hikers? Was this a predatory attack? Attacks by bears in Canada are rare, and predatory attacks exceedingly rare. With just 65 grizzlies in the park, the last known fatal attack occurred in 1973 when a heavily sedated bear charged at a biologist as it was being relocated and released. Of course, this tragedy has hit Doug and Jenny's family and friends hard. It is difficult to comprehend exactly what has happened and the sequence of events that led up to their deaths. Those who knew the couple are in a state of shock, and for it to have happened to such an experienced couple means that it can happen to anyone. Even after deploying two cans of bear spray onto the bear, it wasn't enough to stop the couple's terrifying final affliction. Florida is famous around the world for their alligators. It is theorized that they live in almost all freshwater bodies in the state. In fact, it is believed that there are roughly 1.25 million of the animals living in Florida. Their populations are so big that interactions between humans and alligators are fairly common. Since 1948, there have been over 450 reported attacks, and this number is set to rise, especially when people take their small pets to the alligator's home. We have all heard the inspiring stories of animals saving humans, from whales that protect swimmers from sharks, or dogs protecting their owners from dangerous animals. What most people fail to realize is that humans will usually do the same for their pets, even to their own peril. Many pet owners would do anything for their animals, and there are stories across the world of people going above and beyond for their beloved furry friends. Humans are surprisingly ready to risk their lives for their pets, and some have even made the ultimate sacrifice in the hopes of saving their tiny family members. The Floridian retirement complex known as Spanish Lakes hit the headlines in 2023 for all the wrong reasons. These retirement homes prided themselves on keeping their residents happy and active with a wide range of activities for them to pick from, including swimming and golf. In addition, they boast 24 lakes on their property for the residents to sail on or simply walk around during their daily activities. While these lakes were created to help the mental and physical health of the people living there, they never thought that something could be living in them something that was waiting to snack on some retirees. In February 2023, Gloria Serge had been living at Spanish Lakes for some time. She knew the area very well and had a few friends within the small community in Florida where they would all keep an eye on each other. Despite the people that she knew, her favorite companion was undoubtedly her small dog named Trooper. He had been living with her since she moved into the complex and she enjoyed being able to take him for walks in such a beautifully scenic place, something that she was rarely able to do when she lived alone. After her husband died, she decided that it would be best for her to move in around other people rather than live in the isolation that widowhood tends to accompany. She was grateful to have such a well-behaved dog to keep her company during her days and was excited to take him out on that fateful day. Although they say that a breath of fresh air is good for you, Gloria sadly didn't know what awaited her as she set out for her daily dog walk. That afternoon, Gloria left her apartment as usual with Trooper running ahead of her on the leash. She planned to walk around the lakes nearest her home as she decided that they would be the most beautiful and it would be easy for her to return home if she started to feel tired. She set off, determined to make it around the first lake taking in her surroundings and feeling particularly happy to be living amongst such stunning natural scenery. She waved to some of her neighbors as she got closer to the water's edge, 
looking across to the other side and readying herself for the long walk ahead. In her increasingly old age, she had been finding it more and more difficult to complete an entire lap of the lake. A trooper's enthusiasm and love of being outdoors fueled her to try harder each day. As she slowly made her way around the lake, she had no idea that she was being watched from a distance. 100 feet away from her, on the other side of the water, a 10-foot alligator had spotted the pair walking close to the edge and decided that one of them would make an easy target. It clambered into the murky water and began to stalk Gloria and Trooper, who continued with their walk, oblivious to what was watching them. It stealthily approached them, but hung back just enough to stay out of sight, watching the pensioner and her dog as they continued their leisurely afternoon. It waited for its best moment and then leapt from the water, trying to grab onto Trooper and drag him into the water. But Gloria wouldn't allow it. She now had to decide who would survive this attack, her dog or herself. As Gloria saw the huge beast run at her from the water, she knew what she had to do. Her tiny dog was oblivious to the attack as she swung him out of the way of the alligator's jaws and threw him away from danger, but they weren't safe yet. Seeing that its initial target had been pulled away from its grasp, the reptile turned on Gloria instead, seizing her by the leg and dragging her to the ground. She screamed out for help as she was quickly dragged into the water, waving her arms desperately to catch the attention of any of her nearby neighbors. The huge alligator had a firm grip on her leg and gave no hint of letting go while she was still alive. She knew she only had a limited amount of time before it would be too late. Trooper was barking viciously on the grass as he watched his owner slip under the water, but there was nothing that such a small dog could do to help. Ultimately, Gloria had saved her dog's life by sacrificing her own. One of her neighbors, 76-year-old Carol Thomas, overheard the commotion and saw Gloria being pulled into the water by an alligator nearly twice her size. Panicking, the retiree quickly called the police. Carol ran outside while holding the phone and grabbed a pole from her garden as she tried to help. When she got there, she felt as though her heart had stopped as the woman in the water was no longer moving, only floating on the surface as she was being tugged and pulled by the alligator. Carol began to maneuver the pole towards Gloria, hoping against hope that she could grab it and then be pulled to safety, but sadly it was already too late. Gloria was dead, and the alligator quickly snatched away her body, leaving Carol to watch as the body was pulled under the murky water. By the water, the woman in the lake, the alligator's daughter. An alligator has a woman. It's a huge gator. It's huge. Can you pull her under? Yes. Oh, no. I was trying to stick a pole out for her. Okay. She's gone. When the authorities arrived, there was a crowd of people around the lake as other people living in the complex came to learn of the terrible event that had happened on their doorsteps. They were terrified. They walked the same path every day and were thinking about how it could have been any one of them. They had no idea there was even an alligator in their lake and were shocked that no one had ever noticed such a large beast sharing the same area as them. Shortly after her death, Gloria's body was recovered from the water, her injuries extensive across her entire body as the alligator attempted to begin to eat her before she was brought out of the water. There was only one thing left to do, capture the alligator. Wildlife experts were sent to find the animal and bring it from the lake so that they could decide what to do with it. After a long search, they found it hiding at the bottom of the lake, its belly full. After it was captured, the experts were able to measure the massive animal at 10 feet long. After measuring the gator, they took it away to be killed, as it was decided that an animal that size could not continue living in the lake, certainly not after it had begun to attack the residents of the retirement complex. The owners of the complex then began an extermination effort to make sure that their residents were safe. No one would want to leave their family members in their care if they knew there was a risk of them suffering the same fate as Gloria. They were able to clear as many of the lakes as possible and relocated all of the other reptiles that they found. Unfortunately for Gloria, she was the third alligator victim in Florida in the last six months, leading authorities to warn locals to stay away from large bodies of water, especially when walking with their pets. 
Gloria proved to everyone what people would do to save their animals. Luckily for Trooper, he survived the whole ordeal and was eventually sent to live with Gloria's family, his life saved from the jaws of an alligator by a woman who would protect him up until her very last breath, up until her terrifying final affliction. Durango, nestled in the heart of Colorado State in western U.S., is a vibrant and bustling town surrounded by towering peaks and rolling hills that offer breathtaking vistas at every turn. Here, one can hike through the towering San Juan Mountains, kayak down the Animas River, or bike through the winding trails of its jagged countryside. The scent of pine trees fill the air as the crystal clear streams and verdant meadows take away your breath. Lainey Melavolta was a 39-year-old backcountry enthusiast who enjoyed being out in the woods. She and her boyfriend, Justin Wrangle, lived together in their home north of Durango Town. The outdoors here provided an awe-inspiring scenery that Lainey enjoyed exploring with family, friends, and her two dogs. On Friday, the 30th of April, 2021, Lainey clocked out of the Republic National Distributing Company in Littleton, where she worked as a wine sales representative. She was feeling high in spirit as she looked forward to a fulfilling outdoor experience over the weekend. She was a fearless adventurer who loved nothing more than exploring the great outdoors. In the evening, Lainey put on a sturdy pair of hiking boots, leashed her dogs, and set out on a peaceful walk with her two dogs by her side. She took a quiet, private trail near County Road 203 and Trimble Lane. The crisp evening breeze was scented with the fragrance of pine trees as the setting sun cast a golden glow over the landscape. Lainey found solace in the quietness of the trail and the breathtaking panorama. The outdoors was her sanctuary where she could escape the hustle and bustle of her job and reconnect with herself and with nature. The serene, winding trail passed through a wooded area near Whispering Pines Bible Camp. As they moved deeper into the trail, she could see the world fading away, leaving the three of them surrounded by the beauty of Durango's backcountry. It was a fleeting moment of pure contentment and tranquility in a world that can at times be overwhelming and chaotic. However, before she could wander further, her two dogs became alarmed, stood on their tracks, and their ears stood erect. They then began barking continuously while facing the woods. Something in the bushes had spooked them. Lainey attentively scanned the woods, but she couldn't see anything. She knew that her dogs wouldn't just bark without cause, but she had no idea of what her dogs had sensed or seen. And then, just before the last light of the setting sun disappeared, something emerged from behind the woods. It was a female black bear with her two cubs in tow. They were coming straight at her and her dogs. The sight of the huge bear shook her to the core. She tried to move, but her knees were suddenly too weak. She stood frozen in terror as her dogs barked and yipped in fear while fleeing back down the trail, tails tucked between their legs, leaving Lainey alone with the bear. At 8 p.m., Justin Wrangle, Lainey's boyfriend, arrived home from work. He was working later than usual that day and had tried reaching Lainey to let her know that he would be coming home late, but Lainey was yet to respond. Immediately after parking his car, he noticed that something was odd. He noticed the lights in the house were off and the dogs were out in the yard with their leashes still on. His girlfriend Lainey was nowhere to be seen. He looked through all the corners of the house and even the shed outside, but still he couldn't find her. Knowing that she often took the dogs for a walk along the private trail, he dropped his luggage and set out following the trail near the Whispering Pines Bible Camp to look for her. The sun had set hours ago, leaving the forest in pitch darkness. Justin searched the trail while calling out her name as the light from his flashlight cast eerie shadows on the trees, but the silence of the woods was the only response he received. As the minutes painfully went by, Desperation crept in and his body began to fill with fear and worry. A sense of despair washed over him as he thought of all the things that could have happened to his dear girlfriend. He couldn't bear the thought of losing her. At 9.30 p.m., 
One and a half hours after he began the search, his flashlight skimmed across the underbrush and he caught a glimpse of human legs with familiar hiking boots still on. The legs were protruding from a lump covered in dirt and debris. He got closer to examine the horrific scene and lifted the twigs and leaves carefully, crossing his fingers that it was not his girlfriend lying there helplessly, and if it was, he hoped that she was still alive. As he lifted the last leaf off the face and shone his light on it, his heart sank and shattered into a million pieces. It was his girlfriend, Lainey, lying motionless with her body partially eaten. Justin's hands were shaking as he grabbed his phone and dialed 911 to report the incident. Deep in his heart, he hoped that this was just a bad dream and that maybe, just maybe, Lainey would wake up. As he slowly came to terms with reality, Justin sat next to her lifeless body in the pitch black woods and wept uncontrollably. The thought of being alone in the dark trails no longer scared him. He felt as if his world had come to a sudden stop. Colorado Parks and Wildlife Authorities promptly arrived at the scene and declared Laney dead. For the second time, Justin's worst fears had been confirmed. The authorities immediately suspected a cougar to have been the culprit, as these wild cats tend to bury their prey with leaves and dirt before returning to finish feeding on them later. However, the officers also found bear droppings and an abundance of bear fur at the scene, and they were now more convinced that the culprit was in fact a bear. A search team consisting of Colorado Parks and Wildlife officers with trained tracking dogs tracked and located the female black bear and her two cubs, who hadn't gone too far from the scene. As per the Colorado Parks and Wildlife's policy, when a bear attacks or consumes human remains, it has to be euthanized. And so the bear, along with her cubs, were put down. Relocation isn't considered a real option in these cases, due to fears that bears might return to their original location, having found a new food source in humans. A necropsy carried out by a state wildlife pathologist revealed human remains in the digestive systems of the sow and one of her cubs. The trio was in perfect health with adequate fat stores and no signs of abnormality or disease that would have caused the attack. The sow weighed 204 pounds while the cubs weighed 66 and 58 pounds. The officers stated that the 10-year-old mother bear was potentially teaching her cubs that humans are also a source of food and not creatures to avoid or fear. This, with no doubt, would make the cubs potential man-eaters as they aged. An autopsy on Laney revealed that she had passed on from blood loss due to perforations on her neck. The extensive damage had been inflicted by the sow after its sharp and long canines punctured her jugular vein and other regions on the neck. According to the coroner, the sow may have taken Laney down by clamping her powerful jaws on Laney's neck and throwing her back and forth before dropping her to the ground. The sow and one of her yearlings had then partially eaten the soft tissues on her face and arms. Both the autopsy results performed on Laney and the necropsy results from the bears confirmed Laney Melavolta's death was the result of a bear attack. Her family and friends were shaken to the core by her demise. They described her as an experienced and knowledgeable operator in the backcountry who spent her life in the outdoors. Her greatest joy was to be in the woods, and she wouldn't have wanted to exit the world in any other place, something that gave her loved ones some solace. As for Lainey, she did nothing wrong to invoke the attack. She was simply in the wrong place at the wrong time, sadly leading to her terrifying final affliction.